I'm here at Sonic Bloom with Calia Scintilla and Evolution. Thanks so much for uh, for being interviewed today, guys. Thanks so much for having us. For sure. So I want to start at the very beginning. Can you guys each tell me uh, where you're from and how you first got interested in uh, making music? Uh, well, um, I'm from Australia. Grew up in the country, kind of near Sydney, and. Um, yeah, I guess I got into music through my parents because they were really into uh, a whole bunch of like 70s rock and funk music and so that was definitely a big imprint on me early on. I uh, had piano lessons when I was younger but I didn't enjoy it at all because it was very rigid and you know, I had to sit up straight. The woman was a little bit, you know, I didn't get along with her. I was a very rebellious kid, I just wanted to do whatever. and. Um, but yeah, then I, I went from that, um, always being passionate about listening to music and just loving it, like nothing else touched me like music did. And then um, when I got into high school, uh, I picked up a guitar and started playing guitar a bit, and then drums, got into drums, and me and some mates from school, the other kids who weren't really into sport or being, you know, really nerdy with the academics, we were kind of like the outcasts. We got together and started having a rock band, and. It became a f <clears throat> kind of like a funk rock band and we get together on the weekends and jam out. And then it evolved from like, after I left school and went to the city, I started going to nightclubs and uh, experienced electronic music for the first time. So uh, at that point it just became clear that I needed to get turntables and a whole bunch of vinyl really quickly. So that's what I devoted to and I became the biggest vinyl junkie I would spend money on music over eating, you know, and rent. Sometimes I was so behind on rent, but I just had to have those records. And uh, yeah, so the like seven years I was DJing vinyl gave me this awesome sort of empathetic feel of how a dance floor uh, energy moves. And, and that was kind of like the, yeah, the prelude to then moving into the, um, becoming an electronic music artist. I had a computer and I was making some tunes back in 2005, but it wasn't until 2007 when I went to a festival like this, um, with the Australian version, which is predominantly Psytrance, and then I had this like total epiphany of like, wow, this is my tribe and this is where I need to be and this music is amazing. So that's when I got full power into uh, my Merkaba project. And then after about a year of writing Psytrance, I started to then sort of branch back into writing some sort of down-tempo broken beat stuff uh, inspired by Middle Eastern music and Timber and Shibongo predominantly and then Kali Sintilla was born from that. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. What about you? Um, well, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio and um, music has been definitely an aspect. I studied theater for a really long time and went to college and um, really have been working with the different kinds of arts and integrating to them together. So when I started working with Yegan, that was the piece and the offering that I was bringing to the table, which was all the story and the mythos and the soundscape is the place where basically the character can come to life. So we were bridging our worlds of him being a musician and me being more of the theater artisan, writer, director, and visionary for the visual uh, manifestation of the music. Awesome. Yeah. How did you two meet? We met actually at my house. Um, I he had a friend who he was visiting from. Um, he was coming from Australia, and um, our, my roommate basically introduced us. And then after that, we uh, connected at a festival, Beloved, and had a good friendship and stayed in contact. And then the second time Gagan came around, um, we connected at Symbiosis at Pyramid Lake, and so then that's when. Sort of journey together. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's a great story. Yeah. Cool. So I know you play as uh, Kalia Scintilla and as Merkaba. Can you tell me a little bit about um, the difference between the two and why you chose to play under two different monikers? Mm. Um, well, yeah, like I said, it was the Psytrance that was really the passionate drive to make music. I went from, you know, dabbling in it to finding like this thread of like that speaks to me. I experienced this Australian artist called Tetrameth and he um, creates this really crazy psychedelic journey trance and when I felt the power in that music I then was 
you know, I just knew it. I was like, my purpose in music is to create music that affects people in the same way. It makes you feel this expansive feeling, you know, this connection with the earth, with the ancients, with, you know, the stars and everything in between. And, um, yeah, so the I got really into that. And then when I started making the down-tempo beats, I was using similar production techniques, but it's, it was coming out very different because I was using the Middle Eastern, a lot of Mid Middle Eastern music as the basis of it, especially listening to Beats Antique, actually, that assisted in, um, yeah, really getting familiar with that Middle Eastern sound. And when I would play Middle Eastern uh, chords and things on the piano or on instruments, it would just happen naturally and just sort of flowed out. So. Yeah, I, I guess the intention originally was that Merkaba was more about um, bridging like a connection with the earth, like that tribal stomping trance beat with the psychedelic of the cosmos, all the crazy trippy stuff. And then Kali Satilla was more just like a sort of, it started off as a side note really, it was just like, oh, I'll make some kind of fun, glitch hot beats with a Middle Eastern flavour to it and um, yeah I mean even today people still don't know that you know both the projects of mine they might listen to one or the other and then they realise oh oh they're both the same person so I kind of like being able to have like these two different monikers and have them separate enough that people don't really connect it unless they're searching for it mm -hmm. it's fun no, I, I'm, I'm dreaming up a couple of other projects, but, you know, that's for years to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Can you tell me a little bit about the, um, the Merkaba music label? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that kind of came about um, when I was doing a small business uh, mentorship in Australia. It was a little thing we had funded by the Aussie government, and uh, they, they kind of help you for two years, have mentoring and um, uh, a bit of a money equivalent to like welfare um, to turn whatever your idea is into a small business and so I went there with the idea of my own music and creating a label and just through that little bit of business mentoring it just sort of helped me come to terms with what creating a label is but my vision for the label has been more about it being a portal for creativity it's definitely you know you can look at it and go, yeah, that's a record label, but the way I want to evolve it is just to be an, an, a portal for art, but art that has intention and art that has heart, and it's, it, you know, it's art that has like a, a meaning and a purpose on the planet, rather than just like, you know, whatever. It's, it's like, I guess when I, when I hear um, demos for the label, um, I, it, it has to hit me in this like soul space immediately. I can usually feel within like five seconds whether it's going to be good or not. You know, when I listen to a song, it's just like this immediate yes or no, and it comes from the intelligence of the body. I'm not listening with my head. So yeah, it's something that just has to resonate on a soul level. It's like music that's made with soul. And you know, I, it's the same when I listen to music across any genre. If it has soul and it's come from the soul and not from the mind of a you know, some, when you hear music from the mind, it can be technically brilliant, but it's lacking this essence. And that can be in any art form, really. Yeah, so yeah, so the idea is just, uh, yeah, a portal for creativity. And as more artists come and, you know, launch their music through the portal, um, you know, I just do anything I can to sort of support them on their journey and don't sort of have any contracts or anything around it to sort of lock people in. It's more just like free-flowing creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So I know you guys played at Sonic Boom last year. Can you tell me um, how you found out about the festival and wanted to become involved? Um, I guess we heard about the festival just through people out in the scene who were like, oh yeah, Sonic Bloom was really fun. Um, and uh, Jamie, uh, who puts it on, um, we've connected with him at many festivals and he's uh, yeah, he's kind of a friend now, so um, I really, really dig his music and his, uh, the, all the stuff he talks about, geometry and the work of Nassim Haramein and all that stuff, and really into that. 
So I definitely um, resonated with him as a being before even coming here. Um, and then, yeah, he uh, invited us last year to come and play, and we were stoked. We were just like, yeah, cool. Because we heard, you know, lots of magical things about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's really special. I really love how they uh, have so many workshops here. There's like mm -hmm. almost as many workshops as there are musical acts to see. Yeah. And I think that's really important. And when yeah. I interviewed Jamie, he actually, I asked him what he sees as the future of Sonic Bloom. And he said, more workshops, more education. And I think that's that's really awesome that, uh, that he is, you know, really putting focus on that. Yeah, totally. Cool. Yeah. So uh, my last question is a little bit different. So at Sparkberry Lane, we spread the sparkle, <laughs> and that can you know manifest in any way. It can be sharing your music, having a conscious conversation, picking up trash. You know, it can really be anything. Yeah. So I want to hear how you guys spread the sparkle. Well, <laughs> our whole offering is super sparkly. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're we're bridging into a place of collaboration. Mm -hmm. So wanting to take the music and to give it um, such reverence and meaning on multiple layers and multiple levels of consciousness. So um, even Kalia Scintilla, Scintilla means to scintillate, to sparkle like a spark. And yesterday and tomorrow is what Kalia means. So we really play with invoking the present moment and then allowing that presence to be the sparkle or the magic of what we're offering and we commit to it, we devote to it. So it's not just something that we think about in passing, it's an actual intention that we actually set before every single uh, set and at the very, very end. And people feel that and then it radiates their internal like knowing and joy and then all of a sudden we're in a sea of that sparkle and that amazingness that's happening and that's that's what we want to give to the world. We want to like have everyone remember through the offering of being authentic and real and connected to our souls that that's where we can all merge and then see the infinite and the divine and everything and then everything becomes illuminated or sparkly. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, I also assist in the spreading of sparkles through my little uh, <laughs> roll on sparkles that I have. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, That's the physical yeah, yeah. form. I, I usually I don't have them on me now, but I usually carry them and then I like sparkle people's third eyes. Oh, that's you awesome. Know, so I'm always spreading the sparkles. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much, guys. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. And yeah, have a great rest of the Sonic Gloom, and I'm really excited for the set. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Cool.